Now this, to me, this is just wrong. It's wrong on so many levels. This is going to be a total voiceover video because I can't take any chances of having to go back and redo anything. First thing in the door, I spot this cute little Christmas plate set. Santa's message plate. Yeah, that thing. It was cute, but their prices here are pretty pricey. And you'll see, I'll put, you know, some of the comps so you can see what these things are going for. I know their employees are looking things up but that's okay. You can still find some really good stuff because usually they haven't looked it up as accurately as they could, which I'll show you on some examples. So I'm just kind of looking at their little, this is a, this is it. This is all the Christmas stuff that they had in the entire store. It's all right here. Not very exciting actually. Then I spot this kind of over in the window. This is in the, in the brutalist um, style. This is not an old piece, as you can see, it's resin, but it's actually very well done for what it is. And that sun is glaring on that price tag and I don't remember what I paid, but I think it was right around seven bucks. This is false graph in the flower market pattern. Not a big seller. Most false graph is not a big seller anymore. Got to look way up high in this store. They put some decorative items up on the shelves. Nothing exciting though. And I'm looking, this little flower pot kind of caught my eye. It came from a family Christian store. They want 10 bucks for it. It is probably only worth 15 to 20. Lots of clear glass and crystal today. And this is by Gorham and they want $25 for it. And you can see the value here. I do glance through the shoes. They've tried to bring some upper end shoes here. I have found some good shoes to sell from here, but I didn't see anything that really caught my eye today. Now I don't just automatically think that resin is out. So I turn this over and see that it is The Shoemaker's Dream by John Herbert. And these actually sell fairly well. It's just not my thing. This is what's called a thumbprint pattern on this. So if you ever get a bowl like this and it's got that big dot, you can use the keyword thumbprint to do some looking up. Those are some silver fade bowls. This little girl was here the last time I was here and she's still missing her fingers. <laughs> Poor little girl. This is in the style of Lennox, but it was not Lennox. This is a piece of recycled glass. This thing was huge and I'm just showing it to you. It's kind of a monster piece that I definitely would not want to deal with. This is by, oh wait, let me show you this tray first. Um, these are known as meat trays and some of them sell quite well, but this one was not marked. Now I'll show you the Austin production sculpture. You can see right here is from 1986. Uh, not a real big seller, um, this one. Some of them do quite well. This is by a company, uh, Achievement Community. I could not find a single thing about Achievement Community. So if you know anything about that brand, tell me down in the comments. It did not have an old feel to it. Ah, uh, but then, look 
what I found. They're panda bears. Yes, and it was like three of them for $20. Now, I had a 40% off coupon. So I'm going to get three of these bears for $16. And I can do that. This is another piece of Lennox, and I thought the pattern was quite interesting, but I couldn't find too much on it. This is not Murano. I'm going to show you that pontal on the bottom. See how cloudy that is? That's what you don't want if you're looking for a genuine piece of Murano. It also did not have the right weight. little mug caught my eye. It is a Starbucks. Unfortunately, it's not one of the Starbucks that's worth the whole bunch and they were actually charging more than you can get it for online. I spotted this. Very excited to find this. I'm shaking it to show you that it's actually a puzzle ball and there's multiple layers of it inside. There's no way to really get it open or anything, but they do call them a puzzle ball and it is carved from bone, I believe. I still have to investigate it a little further, but it was both pieces for $10. And remember, I had a 40% off coupon. So I got that for six bucks. This, I really, really believe, is Orifers. It is not signed like most Orifers is, but it is absolutely the right style and shape and etching. And hey, it's got ducks. So I went ahead and I picked this up. This is known as a wedding vase. Now it says RSH. I contemplated whether to get this, but there was something about the color and the coyote that just said, you know what? Go ahead and put that in your cart. Because again, I got 40% off. Yeah, see? I went ahead and got it. This set really reminds me of the other one I found just in another recent video. It's like a transferred on fruit. So I passed it right by. And I went to this, which I thought was a cake plate, but it's actually a candle holder, probably for one of their big three wick candles that Party Light does. This says Amber Saffron. So this is a sachet and it is actually in there, but it just didn't excite me. So I left him. Now I did like this piece of milk glass. This could actually be a piece of Fenton, I do believe. Those are raspberries, not grapes like I'm used to seeing. But I went ahead and I left it because it just, it doesn't have a real high resale value. They bring lots of little trinkety stuff over here and, you know, things like bears wearing a mask. You actually really never know what you're going to find over in the boutique stores. This piece of glass was interesting, but once I got my hands on it, I'm looking on the bottom for like scratches. I really want to see scratches from age for an older piece of glass. And I'm feeling the weight, which was very lightweight. Older glass just is heavier glass for the most part. Then I spot foxes. How cute are these? $12.99 was a little high, but I had that 40% off. They are Primitives by Kathy, which actually can sell really well. So I got them. I was looking, there was a couple of owls and there was the dreaded red Made in China sticker. I always leave those behind. And then look, I have another set of triplets. So now I have six pandas to sell and I will sell them individually. more glassware. I do like how they merchandise this store. It's just so much more appealing to the eye to shop. I thought this was Falscraft, 
And then I looked in its service merchandise. So some of you might remember service merchandise was a big catalog company, company from the 90s. And sadly, they were knocked out of business by stores like Walmart. I love this cute little strawberry set. There was something so appealing about it. And now I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting it. I do believe it was vintage. It had all the little bowls and the price was right, but I did not grab it. I'm looking at the art wall. Not really seeing too much that's pulling my attention. Until this one. Now I could tell this was a real painting because it's got the texture you see here. So that's one of the signs of an original painting versus a print. I could even see that the artist's name was a little smudged. Why I didn't get it was it just doesn't have the qualities of like a professional artist. This was an interesting piece made to look primitive, very Southwest, but still not even enough to make me pull it off the wall and take a look. Now, these red cake plates really drew my eye, and I'm still kind of thinking they might have been good for displaying things at the booth. They were from the Holiday 2009 collection, probably originally sold at Target. Goodwill gets a lot of Target merchandise. And then I loved these. They are a set of measuring cups from Ashland's, but they just don't have a real high resale value. And then these are Amari. They even say Amari wear on the back. They had four. I, they didn't all even go together, but they had them priced a little high. And then there was this set. Now, this set actually is priced very reasonably. And if you're into dishes and you're in the Las Vegas area, you could actually make some money off of this set of dishes. Um, so... I like how they, they priced that one and actually told you what it was. But then you get over to the Lennox Eternal set and this one is a bit high priced for the pieces that you get. So it's not just how many pieces, it's which pieces. So it's if it's mainly cups and saucers, not so good. These really caught my eye. Now that's a recycle symbol on the bottom, but it was the only mark these had. I just love how they glowed. I mean, there was like no black light or anything. They're just glowing like that. So I think it was like $15 for the tray and the bowl and each. I Because it, I wasn't quite sure how those were priced. But they were super heavy. And not knowing who done them, I did not want to deal with those and the hassle factor. They were not fire and light. I'm sure of that. These were really cute. Again, this is contemporary glass. I'm looking on the bottom. I'm looking for the scratches. I'm looking for the signs of age. There aren't any. This is like contemporary glass. It's kind of in the style of Blanco. These are just some nice iridescent blue wine glasses. Okay. This, oh, I don't even know what to say about this. Made in China, uh, Native American looking pottery. Now this, to me, this is just wrong. It's wrong on so many levels. Um, don't be fooled by the cheap Chinese knockoff pottery. Um, it's got a feel, you can just tell it's not good quality. This is a pattern known as Diamond Point. I love the blue. Just not worth a whole bunch. This is Dragonware. And a lot of times these will have what's called a lithopane, where you can hold it up to the light and you can see a picture in them. These did not have the lithopane. So they weren't going to be worth as much, but they have this one priced pretty reasonably for how many pieces you get in the tea set.
This is some more pretty contemporary glass pieces. They're really not looking for vintage. They're looking for pretty. I do like how they display their ties. Very easy to shop. I spotted a Disney one and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna, and then it was like, oh no, it's $15. No, no, no. Then we got belts. Really a good idea for display and, and merchandising. This is a little wood bear. Well, he wasn't so little. And I totally meant to go back and get him because he was only $20 and then with a, you know, 40% off. I, but I forgot. I left Mr. Bear behind. He would have gone down to the booth. These are cute, but super, super, super con um, contemporary. Like, not a lot of resale value. This was interesting, but it was really chipped up on the edges. This actually is made in the style of the Blanco fish, but I believe this one is made by Shannon Crystal. I was drawn back to the drawers and I spotted the scarves and I do list scarves. They're easy to list and definitely easy to ship. So I was looking. This is not a bad brand, but it's, yeah, that's, that's about what it's worth. All right, we're off to the purse wall here. And sometimes I find some good purses that, that I can flip. Now, I'm not really looking for designer. I'm looking for something odd, you know, like something with like lynx fur. <laughs> it's fake, it's fake fur. Um, but yeah, I could tell it was really, really cheaply made, which is why that got left behind. And see, like I'm, I'm drawn to the shoes with the funky zebra print and all of that. But still, nothing, nothing too exciting today. Just, it's really about what calls to me. Look, there's some more of that fur. I'm just, I'm just looking for that product that says, look at me, look at me. Didn't find any on this wall today. I thought these were going to be tin and they ended up being like a stoneware. And I'm sorry that I did not hold my camera up where you could actually see them better. It looked like Hobby Lobby type stuff is what it looked like. And then we have feather looking art. Again, probably more Target stuff. This is a pretty stoneware bowl, but it had absolutely no marks. And it was huge. This fascinated me. Look at how this folds up. It's made by a company here, right here in Las Vegas. And I'm sure it's made like, you know, with a machine, but it was really cool. Just didn't have a lot of resale value. Okay, last time I was here, you guys told me that this is actually from Boutique's Mud Pie. So my turkey was still here, my Mud Pie turkey. And so Mud Pie turkey came home with me. So thank you. I'm just pointing out this piece of glass. Look at the seam. Look at the lack of workmanship in the creation. And again, this is Chinese glass. Now you're gonna have to learn to recognize it without that sticker, which many times gets taken off. But see the pontal? See that cloudy looking pontal? That is cheap glass. And just looking at these crystal, actually it was only one. That's why I put it back. I thought maybe it was two. And then it's a hippo. It's a hippo vase. Or maybe it was supposed to be a decanter. Either way, it's a hippo. This is what's known as a seductive angel. I get that from the crazy lamp lady. Another monster piece of glass. It's pretty, but I definitely don't want to ship that. These were cute little wood birds and I'm looking at it going, yeah, that probably went on a stick and wasn't meant to just sit the way it is. 
These were interesting, definitely transferred. They were Hallmark and it's actually a line of Hallmark and, and they do okay, um, just not for me. These were just some cute little dishes and then I saw they were Lily and Vernon, which surprised me. And uh, there, I'm showing it to you right side up. But I left those behind. Again, more cheap glass. It's pretty, but you definitely don't want to try to ship, you know, a $25 piece of glass like that. It will take you way too much time for what you're going to get out of it. This was a little carved souvenir guy from Bora Bora. No, that other piece of glass was not fire and light. It was very cheap. This is a little pink bunny. Again, overpriced for what it is. This piece fooled me at first until I got my hands on it. So you can kind of see it's not the right shape for what you see out there in the mid-century glass. And it had no weight to it, which was another indicator that it was a knockoff. This is made by Shannon Glass. And it was a super heavy on the top. And I thought, you know, that's just a recipe for disaster around here. Again, these laser art pieces, I've said it in other videos, some of them can actually sell for some really good money. So don't automatically discount them. That was a classic princess house pattern in that etching. Oh, old globes can sell for good money and there is a way to know the age and I'm trying to think is it is it the Congo that something the African countries are the key and I can't exactly remember what I was told about which African countries would help you date the globe but there's a way this is by a company called Bellon it's it's like I think it's supposed to be like Greek mythology and it's interesting, but it's not really my thing. So I left that for somebody else. And then I had to work to get that lid back on, which is why I'm not moving my camera. Oh, there we go. Focus, Danny, focus. Again, another cheap piece of glass. It's pretty. It looks like it's like a summer so, but you can actually tell it's not even even. When you're looking at the glass, look for quality. And these are ruby flashed diamond point. And these are berry bowls and they've got them, you know, by the time you buy all four, that's pretty much all you're gonna get for them. This is Amari Colors. This was an unmarked Lazy Susan set. I actually just, I really liked it. I have no use for it. And I didn't really want to resell it. So I just played with it for a minute. And then I left it behind. I thought this was wood. It is not. It was ceramic. Made to look like wood. And this is a frog holding some leaves so he can hold some flowers. Okay, yeah, I had to do it. This is not something you wanna pick up for resale. Don't do it, don't do the precious moments, but I had to pick it up because it had a turtle. This is Mikasa Light and Lovely. And it's actually quite lovely. This cracked me up because that plate on the bottom is plastic. So this is kind of a little project piece, I think. And they wanted 10 bucks. Well, that was fun and it was a little bit hit and miss, but I'm really happy with what I found there. Found some very unique items, some modern items, but yet modern items with value. I will probably do a haul video on this stuff 
and see, I put it out there so I can be accountable and actually then go, you know what? I told him I'd do it. I got to do it. And I'll explain more what each item is and what it's worth and all that good stuff. All right. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know when I go live, which I do every week, at least twice. And uh, with that, go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.